Hello, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Chefonamission.com is my website. Chefonamissionblog.com is where you can find a lot of my current videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is nutrition and it's seafood. Um, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to interview Alan Winters uh, from the Chef's Warehouse, which is a big player in the New York market, um, tri uh, metro market as far as wholesale distribution of all kinds of neat restaurant specialty items and uh, Alan Winters heads up the seafood department there and um, frozen seafood you know I get a lot of requests for the uh, questions of the restaurant you know sometimes is your seafood fresh well of course it's fresh else we wouldn't be serving it the opposite of fresh is rotten or bad so nobody's serving rotten or bad seafood intentionally our seafood is fresh you know but is frozen actually making it fresher it's going to be an interesting an interview here with Alan um, so let's uh, let's roll right to the tape and uh, and uh, let's hear what Alan has to say about frozen seafood high quality frozen seafood and Alan Winters is very instrumental in the New York market as far as sustainable seafood and frozen seafood and Alan Winters works for one of my favorite companies called Chef's Warehouse hello Alan Hi Marcus how are you I'm doing great I'm doing phenomenal here. So now let's just talk a little bit about your background. You've been in the seafood business, I don't even know how many years. It's been many, many years you've been in the seafood business. I mean, I've always known you as the seafood guy. So Well, I was kind of born into the seafood business, really. Um, <clears throat> I started, you know, I finished school, um, went to school in the city, you know, at NYU, and I, I actually studied political science, urban studies and thought that was the direction I was going to be going in. But my family had a seafood business uh, for many, many, many years. And I became involved in the business for what I thought was a temporary period. <laughs> and it turned out that I ended up staying forever, which actually I was afraid was going to happen, but that's what happened. But I, I found myself being more and more drawn into the business because of the dynamic nature of the business, the fact that it was always changing and just really interesting so you know I stayed in my family business and helped to build that and and grow that uh, myself along with my my brothers and we you know had always been um, directed toward really high quality both in fresh and frozen but there was a period where I, I just recognized that the fresh business was becoming more and more difficult, you know, to maintain in terms of quality consistency. Absolutely. And that there were a lot of things happening in the business in terms of technology that gave us the opportunity to go in that direction. Sure. And I started to do that when I was with my family business, Winter Seafoods, in you know, in New Jersey. Ultimately we really didn't want to be in the trucking delivery business. I really felt that it was distracting me from the kinds of areas that I needed to really focus on, which was developing the product lines and the marketing of the business and so forth. And I felt that, you know, it was it was part of a just a different type of business that I didn't need to be involved with. I wanted to be involved with the buying selling of seafood and not not really the direct distribution. Uh, you know, in terms of managing all that's involved with that. So, you know, after, you know, we made a few changes and ultimately I ended up becoming involved with Chef's Warehouse, uh, which was Dairyland at the time. I had always respected the company because I thought philosophically we were in the same place in terms of the kinds of quality products I was looking for, the kind of customers that we were marketing to. And, uh, you know, I had spoken a few times with Chris Pappas, the owner, and then ultimately we just made a decision for, you know, to, for me to join the company. And, uh, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Uh, I became involved with the Chef's Warehouse. They hadn't had a seafood program, you know, up until that point. And uh, I came in with a few other people who had been with me over the years and, you know, really developed the business and developed the business with the various niches uh, that appreciated the kinds of products that we had to offer. Great. So now, what yeah. you know, so we first met probably it was at least 10 years ago. So I don't know if you were in call or encounter our first meeting, but but what did you I just moved here from Colorado. It was 2000 and what did you think of me? Cuz I, I probably asked some questions that weren't probably 
I thought you were a little unusual, to say the least. <laughs> which, 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 really, I've maintained that impression all along. <laughs> but, but you know what? You, you actually helped me to move in another direction that became very important to me and ultimately to this to this business. You know, I had um, become a very, very strong advocate of frozen seafood. We always knew of frozen shrimp but not necessarily frozen fish. And that had to do with the ability to freeze with uh, you know, a technology known as cryogenics where the product was frozen you know, a short time after it was harvested, and it really maintained the freshness of the, of the product. Absolutely. Now, uh, the, the first time I was introduced to high-quality frozen seafood was 1999. I was at a seminar with chefs, and we were at the Culinary Institute, and there was about 100 chefs in the room, and they were serving, they served us five different salmons. And it was on a paper plate and everything was numbered. And we voted at the end to figure out which we thought was the freshest, best tasting, firmest salmon. And 85% of the room picked a frozen at sea salmon. Right. And when they revealed, when they, you know, when they, when they, when they pulled the curtain on this, everybody in the room was absolutely shocked. You know, and a lot of people were in disbelief. And so, you know, the, our, our whole... Um, I want to say our whole society sometimes is in disbelief. And, you know, the first thing people ask me about our seafood when they come in, you know, because I use a combination of fresh and frozen. Pre, uh, and first thing people when they walk in is, are your fish fresh or frozen? And I said, well, what's the opposite of fresh? They're like, uh, I was like, rotten? And they're like, well, yeah, fresh and rotten would be like the opposite. I said, well, is frozen, are you, are you referring to frozen as fresh or frozen as, as not good? And they're like, well, I guess frozen would be fresh in a sense. So let's let's talk about the whole stigma about frozen seafood to begin with. Because well, let me just go back to one point, finishing my meeting with you, because while I was always, you know, had been an advocate for a while anyway of frozen, you kind of added a dimension to it. And this is what I meant when I said you were a little bit unusual, because I was saying, well, I wonder what this guy's really talking about. But I learned that it was what you what you had said gave me kind of an early uh, edge on what was to come, which was the idea of sustainability and, you know, finding product that, of course, was, you know, uh, accepted in terms of how it was raised, you know, uh, handled, you know, from an environmental standpoint, uh, the ability of uh, the resource to, to maintain for future generations and so forth. So you kind of got me thinking about that, you know, from the, from the outset of, of our, you know, uh, meeting. And... I ultimately started to incorporate that into my thinking in terms of the frozen. So it evolved to the point where today it's about cryogenics and frozen at sea for me in terms of fish. I'm always seeking sources for that. It's been kind of a cause. But at the same time, I'm looking for those sources that are also sustainable. Sustainable. So it's and I've learned a lot more here. about that as the years have gone on here. And to me, I mean, those are critical factors right now in the development of our business. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. So, yeah. And I, again, I, um, you were the person. So, I, I mean, I've always appreciated that. And, you know, you and I, you know, we talk a lot and I think we kind of give each other ideas and it's been, you know, it's, it's been a good relationship that way in, in really um, helping each other to grow in the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, frozen seafood. So, I mean, really... I mean, I love frozen seafood. You love frozen seafood, but how do we explain to customers? How well, do we that's explain, a good point. How, how do we explain yeah. to the public? And um, you know, I mean, first of all, I guess you know, you deal with a lot more chefs than I do. Are how many chefs are actually convinced that that frozen seafood is a good option at this point? You know, that's. A, I mean, that's a good point. That's a good question. You know, it was harder years ago. It's gotten a lot easier, and part of the reason I think it's gotten a lot easier is because the public is more aware. You know. The public reads articles, paper, you know, newspaper articles, listens to programs. Uh, there are chefs on a mission like yourself that go out and advocate for these things, you know. And I think it's become easier because the public is is more aware. Um, yes, certainly we do have the situations where people in the restaurants say to the to the uh, wait staff person, "Is this is this fresh? Is it fresh fish?" But the answer is, as you said before, well, what is what is fresh? And, you know, it, it, it comes back to, it's interesting. I always use this as an example. There's a restaurant on the West Coast called uh, Ray's Boathouse, which was early 
in you know trying to convert its customers to thinking that they could eat fresh or frozen depending on quality and basically they they have a statement on their menu that says you know we carry the freshest fish whether it's fresh or frozen that's a beautiful thing and you know that's helped them and so i always try to spread that word uh you know to the chefs i talk to in hopes that they will also spread the word to their staffs and in turn the customers you know, and I think it's worked. I mean, it, it, you know, it's it's. I see the change in attitude, so I think we're doing okay with that. That that's really what it's about. It's about educating the customer. So, for instance, you know, I mean, I like to, I like to explain to my customers fresh versus not fresh. You know, fresh versus rotten, fresh versus bad, and they they kind of get that concept. Like, oh, okay. Now, I mean, as far as you know, I like to explain to people that microbial counts are extremely far less in frozen once it's thawed than what we call fresh seafood well that's you know that that makes sense because what happens is I mean with the frozen process the fish is harvested you know and within a short period of time after after that it's really flash frozen you know optimally minus 60 to 80 degrees so there's really you know you're, you're minimizing any bacteria in the fish you know it's just it's being processed that quickly that it's really a fresh piece of fish for all intents and purposes as opposed to the fish that is on the boat, the boat's out there for, uh, you know, 14 days or so. Then it comes into port. Then it goes into the distributor's warehouse. Who knows how long it sits before it gets to you. So anytime I'll take a product that's been immediately frozen, you know, on the vessel. I always go uh, to the example of the, uh, you know, of the movie um, Perfect, Storm, Perfect Storm, where they were fishing for uh, swordfish. And th- that boat, those boats were out there for a month. A month, and absolutely. So what's fresh about that? It's sitting on the boat, and you know, it's it's in ice, it's in the hull, and it's a long period of time before it gets into circulation. Absolutely. So for me, you know, the bacteria count issue is very important, and the fact that you can freeze immediately and and prevent an issue with you know with the with the bacteria problem is is you know what's critical here. Absolutely. So what are when you look for a new supplier, yes. what what is what specifically are you looking for as far as 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 high quality frozen versus low quality frozen as far, as far as the freezing quality itself, not the fish quality, but the actual process of freezing. Okay, well, a good example is a, is a recent supplier that we've added is a source from Alaska. Now you know you talk about salmon, and we've always known Alaska to be a good source for sustainable seafood, uh, which it has, and that's important. Um, so that was the first criteria. But one of the issues with Alaska is that although it's a great source for fish, it's not always been a great source for handling the fish and freezing it quickly. Quickly, Some of these you know, fishing you know, areas really haven't had the equipment to do the job properly. But recently, you know, we found a source in Alaska, uh, that is harvesting the coho salmon, for example, which I believe you you know you're using right now, and uh, of course you know they follow the openings and closings of the season, and we know that the product is you know fits every criteria for sustainability. But what this company is also doing is they're sourcing from boats that have the capability to freeze at sea. So, and that's not everywhere in Alaska. So the fact that they can freeze at sea means that I'm getting this this product uh, from a source that's handling it in a way where there's just no delay time between the time it's caught and the time it's packed. And it's giving me the level of quality that I'm looking for. Plus, this this company... You know, has the ability. They they work with you know several boats and so forth. So they have a you know they have the capability to maintain a good supply. Because in Alaska, also you've got a lot of small fishermen who are out there and they're catching their fish. You know, while the season is open, but there there's not that much of it that they're going to be able to to maintain. They don't right. have the resources to do they that. Don't have the resource, they don't have the processing resources. Right. They don't have so, right. You know, again, part of the sustainability and freezing at sea is also to find a source that can back up the product and you know back up the you know the the inventory and hold the product for periods of time so that kind of brings it all together for me right so so from what i understand because i've I've spoken to a lot of these fishermen as well as these guys are actually freezing within 30 minutes an hour hour and a half of catching the fish 
Sometimes yes. the fish hasn't even had a chance to hit rigor mortis yet. And well, what then, happens is, what happens is, I mean, I think ideally you do allow rigor to set in, but tech, this is really what's happening. The the uh, the fish is being frozen at temperatures of minus sixty to eighty degrees, and when you utilize the technology to do that, what's happening here is that the fluid and flesh freeze simultaneously. So you're not breaking down the cellular structure of the fish. Which is extremely important. Right. And so, right. And when you thought, for all intents and purposes, you're, you know, you're eating a fresh product. You're eating fresh and product. And you know that because when you thought, you're not going to see all kinds of water coming out. Right. Every once in a while, as we seek out new sources, someone will send me fish. And they'll tell me it was frozen under the proper conditions and it's what I'm looking for, whatever. And before I even cook it, you know, we put it on the on the plate and we defrost it, and I see all kinds of water coming out of the fish. I know the cellular structure is broken down, and I know it's not going to perform the way I want it to perform. Absolutely, which was one of my next questions to you. When you analyze fish, you obviously take samples in, and, you know, because you'll, you'll tell me, oh, I'm, I'm looking at this fish, I'm looking at that fish, and like a month later, I'm like, Alan, what's happened to this fish? And you're like, well, we're going through our process of testing it. So you right. must do a thorough testing process where you – where you actually slack thaw the fish and then te test it with chefs, I assume, in the office. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's where I'm. That's where I'm also quite fortunate, you know, at Chef's Warehouse because I'm surrounded by chefs and um, sometimes too many chefs <laughs> because everybody's got a different opinion. But generally, we ultimately agree when a product is right, it's right, and we all believe in it. And that's what happens when we taste the product. Um, if it's what we're looking for, pretty much everybody agrees. We know right away. And right. so, you know, right. we cook it and everybody comes running into the kitchen and, and we check it out and then we make the decision. Right. And we can tell if it's been, if, you know, if it's been handled under the process that, you know, we know will produce the best results. Right. So, you know, as, as far as the negative connotations of, of frozen, you know, this, we're, we're, we're talking cryogenic. We're talking f capabilities that, that you could never do at home, that a restaurant could never do in, in, in their in their in their walk-in freezer so I mean this is really like a very specific technology that is really designed you know for specifically freezing and properly preserving fish I Correct. mean this is the, the, I mean I mean this is a, you can't envision like a, a home freezer you know we all freeze fish at home when we have an extra piece and lead it later and this is what you're talking about the cell structure being damaged the water leaching out because the temperature is not nearly cold enough to really cohesively freeze um, everything, where on the thaw it's going it's going to be of high quality. So we're all familiar with a piece of fish well, that we taste that's that's really like dry, but we didn't overcook it. But it's just like like a really dry piece of fish. Like ooh, you could just really tell that it's frozen because the cellular structure broke down. Right, exactly. You know, when they try to free the fish. Interestingly, you know, chefs will buy fish and find that they you know have too much. And then decide they're going to put it in their freezer. You know, on the one hand, there are still those chefs who'll say, "Well, I won't buy frozen fish," but then the chef will put the product in the freezer Freeze because freezer. he has no choice. Now, the likelihood is ninety-eight percent of the time, the restaurant doesn't have the capability to flash freeze cryogenically freeze a product, and consequently, the freezer that they will put it in is is going to freeze it under very slow, you know conditions and slow freezing conditions and the product is just not going to be right it's not going to perform it's not properly gonna hold up. it's not going to perform right so yeah. i think when people walk into a restaurant they say is your fish fresh or frozen the frozen they're assuming is the old way of freezing or the home way of freezing which is why the whole negative connotation of frozen seafood is out there um you know but well, frozen was a, it was also an afterthought you know as fish Years, you know, as as I when I entered the business, you know, we always knew of frozen fish as as product that you put in the freezer as it was starting to go downhill, exactly. and so that still remains in the minds of many people. You of know. a lot of people. So now yeah. you you mentioned the perfect storm and and the, and the swordfish boat going out for thirty days. How long can can seafood really hold up if it's properly iced, properly stored once it's caught? Well, again, it depends on how cold, you know, you know, it's being held. I mean, really, on the boats, some of the conditions, uh, the refrigeration conditions are not too far from freezing temperatures. So, you know, if it's chilled properly, you know, you're having fish uh, come into port that's been out there for weeks. 
Right. And, you know, we know that we can get good fish that way, but not always. Not always. And not always. And, you know, you're taking that kind of chance. What's happening with the freezing process is that you're really securing the consistency of quality of the product. Exactly. Now, now I I you know, on a, on a commercial level, you know, it's it's nice to be able to think that, you know, you can go out and get some fresh fish and come back in a day or two days, take it, serve it in the restaurant. The reality of what we deal with in this business to service our market, it's just not practical. And so, you know, my thinking has been that, you know, we, we want to, you know, introduce to people the concept, to chefs particularly, the concept of of being able to buy from a reliable source, a source that, you know, understands high quality frozen, uh, at least, you know, a certain percentage of their fish that they're going to be using in their business so that they can depend on that consistency and that they can actually help with their profitability. Sure, there'll be specials here and there, and they'll get some great fresh fish from some local guys or, some, or from, you know, from suppliers who, you know, who have gotten, you know, lucky that particular week. But I don't think that you could run a business just depending on that. I, abs- I, I totally agree with you. So let's take fish from the boat to the restaurant, you know, because a lot of people assume that, you know, that, okay, a fish is caught and then it's shipped to a restaurant, but that's not really reality. Um, you know, not in you know, any way. No. So, what yeah. happens once once the fish is caught, and then once the boat lands to the dock? What? It, you know, I just have to interject. You know, it's it's funny because people also have in New York. You know, we have thousands of restaurants, and every restaurant has on the menu. Uh, you know, and scallops are another topic. You know, maybe for another day, but that we have divers scallops, and you know, everybody's got divers scallops okay. every day, and really. You know, there's about two divers left in Maine. Everybody else gave up, you know. And uh, <laughs> these divers, I can tell you, are not getting all of these scallops. So, you know, there's a lot of popular misconceptions out there as to what's going on. And, you know, and we've developed, as you know, a frozen scallop, which we really believe in. And it, we believe in it because it's been frozen immediately after harvest, and it hasn't been sitting on the boat for a period of time. But anyway, back to your question. I just, I, you know, I wanted yeah. to mention that. <laughs> So really, really, you know, once once a boat, once a fish is caught out there, you know, it's not delivered right to the restaurant. You know, no. where does a fish go once once a boat lands? Well, again, understand as I said, the boats are out there for a long period of time. First of all, they have to be to maximize their catch to make it profitable. Absolutely. And then it's coming back into the processing facility and it's going to an auction. There's a lot of delay in this process here. You know, now you're going to get certain certain fish aboard that vessel that was the top of the catch that's going to be very good but you know it's not all top of the catch it's not all top of the catch or top of the trip and that's you know i mean a restaurant can get a great product you know at the early part of the week and at the latter part of the week get a completely different product from his supplier so the point is you know it it depends on how long the boat has been out and then again how long has the product been sitting in the in the vendor's warehouse you know waiting to sell Right, right. Now, now these lot, are the things that we need to be concerned about. Now, a lot of people, you know, brag that they're getting from Hunts Point, from Fulton Fish Market. You know, that's a lot of people brag in the New York metro area. I get my fish from from Fulton's, but really, where does Fulton get the fish from? They're not. Well, that's right. You know, I mean, just because you know, people, I read that. It's you know, I laugh when I see that because you know, they say we go right to Fulton Fish Market to get the product. They don't happen to mention that it was on a boat for a month before it got into the Fulton Fish Market. Right, or and also, or, you know, or another mar- days it's been at Fulton Fish Market. Or at another market, because or at another market, because really, really, I mean, really, for me as a chef, when I think of markets, you know, I think of Seattle, I think of Gloucester, I think of Gloucester is right. a really main hub for our East Coast fish supply, Gloucester and Boston, and you oh. know, New York, you know, is really not for me as uh, would be a primary option. I, if I wanted high quality, I'd say I want something that just landed in Gloucester, you yeah, know, that, sure. that just just landed there. Now, realistically, Hunts Point or Fulton. You know, could they be sourcing from Gloucester? I mean, I mean, could 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 they're sourcing could they, from everywhere? They're sourcing. You know, from and everywhere. there are all there are all varieties and qualities of fresh fish. I spoke to a chef once that said he, you know, he had been going to the market, and the fish that he was finding in the market at that point was not like he remembered years ago. And at that, you know, he became very open to to frozen, you know, uh, at that time, um, because he wasn't happy with the consistency. Now, yeah, you know, you can go to the Fulton Market and on every any given day you can find some great fish, but you'll find some not so great fish. Right. And really what I say to, to chefs and what I think the message is that we need to get out is that, 
you know, be open to fresh and frozen. Whatever makes sense in terms of being able to supply the restaurant uh, with the type of quality that you want to offer to the customers. Right. That's really what right. we need to do. I mean, I, I really, my hope is that we'll see more flexibility that way throughout the throughout the market. Now, I remember um, well, you're, you're saying that, that these boats go out for almost a month. Now, I did an experiment myself because a lot of people are, are really going to say, gee, is fish really a month old? Is it really two weeks old, three weeks old? I did an experiment myself once. When I was in Colorado, I used to get live tilapia delivered every Friday to my restaurant. Correct. So I actually got the live tilapia on Friday. I saved a couple of fish. I cleaned them, um, and I iced them down properly, and I monitored them every single day for 20 days. And on the 20th day... I decided to abort this experiment because the fish was still good, and we actually cooked it and ate it, and it was 20 days old. And most okay. people would say, "Oh my gosh, 20 days old! That how 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 in the world are you going to eat a fish that's 20 days old?" And it absolutely had no smell, and because it had no smell, no odor, nothing, and it tasted it tasted fine because I was, had it under proper conditions. But my point to hit this is a lot of people don't really know how old their seafood is when they're walking into a grocery store, oh, into, a mark, into a market, into a restaurant. They have no clue. So people are thinking they're, people are thinking they're eating fish that's two, three, four days old. That's not – that's very. That's a very rare oddity in this in this industry is to eat fish that that's extremely fresh, and which is one of the reasons why I originally was open to saying, well, buying frozen, high-quality frozen seafood is a much better option than who knows what I'm getting – out of a vendor, out of a grocery store, out of a market, from wherever it's coming from, because you really can't tell how actually like, fresh a fish is. Now, I've done surveys with a lot of customers on how fresh do you think a fish is, how, how many days do you think it can last, and most people are honestly going to say six to seven days. It's all, and that's, their, and that's their perception of what fresh fish is. And, you know, so it goes way beyond, you know, the six or seven days that most people think. Now, can, I would just imagine in my mind... The microbial count, even though the fish has kept it near freezing, like you say on these boats, it's still not frozen. There still has to be some kind of microbial growth. Maybe it's very um, stunted because it's at a lower temperature as opposed to 40 degrees, you know, uh, bringing down something down to 33. But there's still a chance, I feel, for microbial growth to slowly grow over this 6, 7 days, 8 days, 10 days, 14 days that a fish is being stored, which for me buying frozen, that's a major, major advantage to know that I'm serving a much safer um, product. And I can really, I, for me, it's bragging rights, actually, as a chef. Well, how about, let I me, mean, why don't we, you know, we also bring in the example of uh, the way things are done in Japan. I mean, what are they using? What are the sushi restaurants using in Japan? They're using frozen. You know, I mean, I think, and, you know, this is the most particular, uh, you know, consumer in the world. And, you know, that population has accepted frozen as the way to go in terms of tuna and, and other products. Right. So I, I think the thing the theme comes down to simply for a chef, the best service is business, the service is customers. It's important to be open to the idea of both fresh and frozen. Whatever makes sense you know at that moment. Absolutely. 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 Well, great, Alan. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about frozen versus fresh. Um, this has uh, been a, a, a t you know, I've been convinced for years, but it's just a matter of convincing everybody else and customers that, hey, frozen is a good option. There is good frozen. Um, there's bad frozen, but then there's really good frozen that we really need to take advantage of and really use. Really good frozen. I mean, we're, you know, and, and you know, we've really, really come to believe in that. You know, now, I mean, there are other things that, you know, in terms of, Farm raised, frozen, you know, wild frozen, and so forth. Which I'm hoping maybe you think we could do another one of these. Absolutely, let's do okay. another one. Let's talk about farm versus wild. Let's talk about sustainability. Let's talk about you know future prediction. I mean, there's there's so much we can talk about, um, you know. And really, one one thing I'm interested in talking about is about trade names of fish. Because a lot of people are misled by yeah. when they when they order, you know, okay, Chilean sea bass is one thing, but it's a trade name. The name is Patagonian toothfish. Now, when it comes yeah, to other species. <laughs> Like rock, like um, Pacific Snapper. I mean, th what is Pacific Snapper? There's right. there's there's 13 USDA. I mean, there's 13 fish that the FDA will allow to go into that that into that trade name. So there's a really right. difference between trade names and the actual species name of fish, and it's very very confusing for consumers and even confusing for chefs. 
So I mean, and that's confusing for me. It is. <laughs> Never mind everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, what what are we eating? What really are we eating? What's on our plate? So I mean, I, I could talk about seafood all day because I really love seafood. I'm really passionate about high quality, sustainable, um, just seafood all around. So, um, Alan, thank you very, very much. You and, too, thank um, you. I mean, again, as I said, you know, and I, you know, I really am not being patronizing, but I, you know, I've always appreciated you know, your feedback, your input. You've helped me along the way to develop my thinking a little bit in this area, and you know, it's it's what makes the business exciting. It creates a cause, a challenge, you know. So absolutely. I appreciate you know, your involvement in all this. All right, absolutely.